No, good. Got a light. All right. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the June 26, 2014 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District. We'll start off with roll call. Dave Nelson. Here. Charlie Anderson. Here. Nick Rico. Here. Ben Viola. Here. Seth Garrison. Here. And Rob McSorley is not present. First order, or second order of business, I'm sorry, is the approval of the May 22nd, 2014 regular monthly meeting minutes. Move motion. approval, Mr. Chairman. A motion. Oh, second. Was second. Okay, Nick was a motion. Dave was a second. I think it was the other way around. Oh, was it? Well, you moved the motion, I did. Well, I heard him. So that, I, I seconded it. Oh, okay. yeah. Nick was the first. Point? Sorry. Dave was the second. <laughs> uh, errors or omissions? <laughs> That's what I thought. All in favor of approval? Not opposed. And Mr. McSorley is joining us. All right. Next order of business, Superintendent and Operations Report. Dave? Uh, copy of your monthly operations report for the month of May is included in your packet. Our from quality, quality was well within our permitted limits for all parameters. We achieved 95% and 94% of approval for BOD and TSS. The effluent concentrations for those parameters were 11 and 15 milligrams per liter, respectively. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of May is included in your packet. Uh, Pulse away pump station continued to have some errant flow readings. This was due to a failing hydro ranger that measures the the levels and the flows within the pump, at the pump station. This has been replaced and the data has returned to normal. Uh, the second sludge pump has been received and is now installed. Carl and Paul will be working on permanently installing the uh, first pump, which was temporarily installed for pilot testing purposes, which was a budgeted item. Uh, the aeration tank valve actuators have been received. Carl and Paul are working on the install as we speak. I am also working with William Kern on the SCADA programming need to integrate these into our operation. This was also a budgeted item. And uh, the office copier has been replaced. The original was bought in 2005 and parts were getting difficult to, to find for repairing it and keeping it operational. Um, and this was also included in our budget for this year. On May 23rd, uh, the Scarborough Fire Department conducted their annual inspections of the wastewater treatment facility. No violations were found. During wet weather events, pump station eight, which is the um, pump station uh, on Black Point Road after the pump, after the treatment plant, um, has been sub subject to significant infiltration and inflow. On June 13th, during the uh, heavy rainstorm that we were receiving, um, I had Jay Kennett go inspect some of the sewers along Seal Rock Drive by the Black Point Inn, and uh, he found significant flow in addition to a surcharge manhole. On, June, on Tuesday, June 17th, Jay and Rudy attempted to TV this line, but found what appeared to be a significant sag in one area and a large quantity of sand in another area, both which impeded further TV inspection. The sewer is a private sewer line, and I'm currently working with the uh, Black Point Inn partners to resolve the situation. Actually, they uh, emailed me today. They will, they're having a contractor out there on July 1st to um, begin the work on this line. Um, I would like to schedule a workshop to discuss the sewering of accessory units um, with the trustees. I propose to hold this workshop uh, here. Uh, just prior to our next meeting, with that, the date and location of the workshop would be July 24th at 6.45, just prior to, the, to this meeting, uh, giving us 45 minutes to hold the workshop. A um, couple items that have occurred since I put these notes together. Uh, this past uh, um, Monday, Monday and Tuesday, we've been doing some wet well cleaning in and around some of our bigger pump, pump stations. Uh, we had a sewer plug up 
on uh, Sylvan Drive off of Pine Point Road, uh, which we had to address uh, due to um, paper towels and wipes that got accumulated in the line. And I just received the uh, first paperwork to begin the, um, uh, the um, renewing our license for the our F1 outfall at the treatment plant. So I'll start to work on that with the DEP. Thank you, Dave. Any questions for the superintendent? Were there any changes in the oh yes Ben sure. were there any changes in the permit this time around or? we haven't gotten to that point of oh. the, the application any other questions yes next. Uh, the problem sewer line um, I was just curious is part of that line ours and part of it private. Where's the delineation, I guess? That's my delineation question. would be as soon as it crosses the public right of way outside of Black Point Road, it becomes a private line. Okay. And there's no manhole right at the division. It's, 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 a, it's a gravity main. It's a gravity main that comes okay. into, our, into our main. Thanks. Did we uh, take a look at it yesterday with the big rain? Was it the same <coughs> problem? No, we didn't take it. Uh, take a look at it during yesterday's rain event. I, I think we're pretty clear on what the issue is on that line. Um, they're going to, for, first thing they need to do is address the, uh, the, one of the things that we found was a partial plug that they, mm -hmm. they need to address and get, make sure they don't have a, any type of sanitary sewer overflow. And the next thing they need to do is identify where that storm water is coming in and remove, remove that. And in talking with uh, some of the people there, they may have an idea of where it's coming from. Already. So July 1st is when they're going to? July 1st, they're going to clear the line, clean the line, and that will be uh, further identify what the schedule will be to address everything else. Okay. Charlie, uh, did you just ask gonna, I was going to ask for a little follow-up clarification. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. All right. Moving on to correspondence. Uh, first item is main power options, May 22nd, 2014. Main power options who we purchase our electricity through provided a market update with regards to future electricity rates. In summary, electricity rates are going up from about six cents per kilowatt hour to eight cents per kilowatt hour or a 30% increase. Uh, we currently have two contracts with main power options. One expires this year and it and includes all our small accounts, uh, some of our, most of our smaller pump stations and the other expires in 2016, which includes the treatment plant and all the, the bigger pump stations. Uh, with regards to our small accounts, we are operating under a six-month extension that uh, bumped our rates up from 6.1 cents per kilowatt hour to 7.2 cents per kilowatt hour. So with this new increase, we'll, we'll likely see a, another increase in, in the uh, overall um, electrical expenses. The, the, the new rate expires in... Um, the current rate that we're paying expires in November. Uh, we'll evaluate our options at, at that time. As I noted, our medium account contract expires in two six, 2016. Under this contract, we are paying the six cents per kilowatt hour until that time. Um, in addition to this, I also have uh, another electrical supplier coming in on also on the 1st, July 1st, uh, just to uh, get another uh, price estimate for power options. Questions on that item? I have a question. Uh, Dave, uh, what have we done in terms of uh, energy efficiency stuff and looking at our facilities to, to limit energy usage? And, and number two related to that, is there anything we can do in terms of peak shaving or energy management that might help abate some of these increases? We, we do, um, as part of our contract with main power options, I'm going to answer you in, in mm -hmm. reverse. Uh, we do peak shaving. We'll, uh, we'll get calls uh, primarily during the summer to get off the grid during um, high demand areas, and that actually keeps our uh, electric uh, price uh, down at uh, uh, these lower rates. Um, you've got to be very careful on the amount of hours you use your generator with regards to peak shaving and emergency backup generation because you, you, if you go over a certain amount of hours, I forget what that hour that, that number is off the top of my head. Um, it it goes from being an emergency energy classification to becoming a power generator, and that's a whole air license requirement. Right. You want to stay outside of that. 
Uh, with regards to energy savings, um, we've been doing a lot with regards <coughs> to the aeration system, uh, managing the process in the wintertime. We stay out of nitrification as long as we can so we don't have to uh, provide the needed air for uh, nitrification, which is um, a huge consumption of energy. Um, when we do nitrify during the summer, we convert the operation to um, the uh, denitrification process, the MLE process, to manage that. Uh, we have added DO probes within the aeration tank such that we are uh, better managing the DO within the tanks. And as I noted earlier, the electric actuators have to go on the aeration tanks, and that's to further fine tune and make sure that we're not over aerating the, the, the DO controls there. So um, we've been doing a lot with regards to around the, the, the process to, to save energy. I did do an energy audit on the facility uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, we were actually rated fairly well. Good. Good. Well, let us know if anything comes up in terms of control systems or anything like that that might enhance that. The other thing I've been watching is in Massachusetts, you know, they've had a lot of alternative energy contracts and a lot of the... Uh, municipal facilities there and utilities have put in solar and wind and gotten good subsidies. We don't have a program like that in Maine, but hopefully one will come along yeah. in the future. <coughs> right now, that, that's not cost effective yeah. for us. Any other questions? I just had one. I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer this, Dave, but with regards to the prices increasing here, just to be clear, <coughs> Maine Power Options is increasing the rate from six to eight, or is that the projected increase in electricity rates overall? That's the projected increase in electricity rates. Main power option goes out the contract, goes out the bid uh, for, um, we're part of a, um, um, a group of uh, municipal um, organ that, that put together our power and we go out to bid as a one, one large yeah. contract and, and they manage that process for us and they're the broker basically. Yeah. The broker. Um, so they're estimating an increase to eight cents per kilowatt hour. It's just it's primarily due to uh, uh, distribution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. If there's no other questions. We'll move on to the next item of correspondence, and that is uh, from an email uh, from Jesse or to Jesse Abbott, actually June 18, 2014. Yeah, and uh, this goes back to the uh, Seal Rock Drive. Um, uh, private sewer, and I attached the email that I sent out to Jesse Abbott with regards to the sewer on Seal Rock Drive. Uh, Jesse Abbott is one of the uh, partners of the uh, Black Point Inn uh, partnership, um, and so um, he was just my contact. Okay. Any questions about that? Nothing. We'll move on to old business, and there is none this month. New business, Broad Turn Road Sewer Extension. Uh, the Town of Scarborough is requesting approval of a 1,300-foot sewer extension up Broad Turn Road. Upon completion, the sewer would be turned over to the Sanitary District. The sewer extension is intended to provide sewer service for the proposed Habitat for Humanity 13-lot subdivision. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Uh, with regards to capacity reserve fee, there would be no capacity reserve fee due at this time. The Habitat for Humanity project will be subject to those fees. Um, manhole frames and covers shall be uh, utilized to district standard uh, cover. Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permit and uh, the sewer extension permit being required installation to be inspected by the district and then professionally surveyed electronic Geo reference CAD drawings um, stamp PDF uh, provided to the district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. If the can be asked to Second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? <coughs> Charlie. Um, basically, I have two questions. One with regard to the capacity reserve fee. Um, it's going to be a 13 unit. Project uh, capacity reserve fee will be based on that. The town is aware of what the amount of the capacity reserve fee would be at at this time, and Habitat <coughs> Humanity is aware of what the capacity reserve fee will be when they when they secure the 
sewer extension permit to service their development? Yes, they are. We've had that discussion. Okay. And has it been documented in writing anywhere? Mm, no, it, that, that has not been documented. I think it would be very prudent to document that uh, in writing with both the town and the folks from Habitat and Humanity so that we don't get uh, complaints about, gee, we didn't know it was going to be that much money, please provide us some kind of relief from this onerous uh, fee or whatever when we get that far down the road. Uh, I think it will be much more palatable for everybody if they know what the numbers are in advance and can plan, and can plan on those numbers. And um, so I think, we ought to, I think we need to be very proactive with that and make sure that it doesn't come as a rude surprise to anybody as we... Uh, as we go down this path, I, I'll, uh, I, I certainly will add that to the letter and I'll CC the uh, okay. Habitat for Humanity on that. Um, so everybody understands that, that fee is going to be required to be paid. Oh, yes, so absolutely. Even though it's not going to be paid by the town at this point in time, Habitat the town and the town and the folks who are supporting this project fully understand what the cost implication is for that. Um, secondly, I just note that uh, on the plans that were submitted to us, one of the lots did not have a sewer service provided to it, um, and uh, so I think there's going to have to be an extension of that sewer line at the terminus of uh, the existing line to pick up the last lot. And, and you're talking about on the pro on the Habitat for Humanity yes. project itself? Yes. Okay. That 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 was provided for information only? Yeah, flat number um, four doesn't have service. We're only approving the, the gravity. The gravity the up broad term. They will need to bring this back. That will have to be brought back to you. Okay. And then on the, on the um, sewer construction that the town is going to do, um, are you going to have the opportunity to review the contract documents for the construction of the sewer line? In other words, the, the yep. plans that we have don't have the details for uh, the standards for bedding and all, 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 everything around the project. Yeah, I have been working with uh, Mr. Wendell, who's the town engineer on this project, and he has been providing me the documents to review prior. Okay. So, so my concern is that we're not ceding any of our standards or requirements to the town with regard to sewer construction. They're not going to build it the way they want to build it and then turn it over to us, and that we're going to monitor and inspect the, inspect the process as, as the project is ongoing? Correct. Any other questions? None. All in favor of approval? None opposed. And next item under new business is Rigney Farm Subdivision. On behalf of uh, Riz Brower Brothers Construction, uh, Northeast Civil Solutions excuse me, is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the proposed Rigney <coughs> Subdivision consisting of 13 single-family homes located off Highland Avenue. The subdivision will be serviced by a pressure sewer system and discharged into an existing gravity sewer on Pleasant Hill Road. The subdivision consists, consists of 13 single-family residential dwelling units on 13 lots, approximately 1,500 linear feet of pressure sewer with two manholes and sewer services to each of the 13 lots with a stub for an existing home, not, which is not part of the subdivision. The sewer extension manholes and sewer service laterals within the public right-of-way uh, would be transferred over to the sanitary district upon completion of the project. I recommend approval with the following condition. The project is outside the original service area. The capacity reserve fee is based on a single-family residential dwelling units without accessory units. Any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approval and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per home is 
$2,849.15 and is adjusted monthly based on the Engineering News Directed Construction Cost Index. Based on the current ENR, the total capacity reserve fee due for the 13 dwelling units is $37,038.95. The capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. A copy of the recorded subdivision plan shall be provided to the district in both old paper and electronic format. All sewer pipes shall be SDR 11 HDPE and shall be the color green. A stainless steel curb stock with integral check valve shall be installed in the sewer service within the property boundaries at the property line. Um, locate a pro uh, pro locate the f uh, proposed flushing manhole at station 5 plus 25 within the right of way of Rigney Farm Road. Uh, the proposed air release manhole at station 10 plus 20 shall also have a, a, a vacuum release and a flushing connection. All force mains, including sewer services, shall have detectable underground utility marking tape placed approximately three feet below grade directly above the force mains. Provide a copy of the detailed zone analysis, design data, final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval. So extension permit is required. A complete application associated fees shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. And a sewer permit is required for each house. A completed application and associated fees shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no sewer site work shall be completed. Installation uh, shall be inspected by and approved by the district. And finally, the uh, record plan shall be professionally surveyed, electronic, geo reference, CAD drawings, uh, stamped PDF, and provided to the uh, district upon completion of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with caveat attached. Second. Motion is second. Questions? <coughs> Charlie. Um, I think I've expressed concern in the past about um, the awareness of property owners buying these individual lots to understand that they're responsible for the operation of these pressure sewer systems and that we don't have any interest in the sewer lines beyond the main and the street. Um, is there going to be, I think we talked briefly about some kind of disclosure or release liability requests for the district going forward on their on their individual on the individual sewer permit applications for each each parcel? Yep. Has there been follow up on that at all? I, I did talk to our council on the, the matter and he was um he felt that the the verbiage that he had modified uh, on the recorded subdivision plan was more than adequate, but I was also going to modify our permits that we give uh, with regards to the pressure sewers to include that same language such that the exact same language would be attached to that yeah. individual permit. I think, that I think that would be really prudent um, to have that done. Yep. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had to deal with angry homeowners and property owners who have come to me in years past and just said, you know, I don't really care what's on the subdivision plan. I didn't know anything about this, you know. And, you know, they don't do their due diligence and try and pass that on to <coughs> us. And I think if we have something in the individual property folders as part of the history of those parcels that uh, will just make life much easier for the superintendent and ultimately the board of trustees going down the road. Yep. And I guess I'm still not liking the policy that we have in place that allows these pressure sewer systems to be turned over to the district. And uh, so I guess I'm just questioning, Dave, whether you're still comfortable that the policy is a sound one for us to... I do. I am I am comfortable with the, the policy, Charlie, and, and the technology. Um, the other thing I wanted to note is that we have an application for sewer extension permit signed by Northeast Civil Solutions engineer and not by the owner of the project. And 
uh, in light of recent developments that we've had with owners of projects telling us they're not aware of their obligations or the information that we've got isn't consistent, uh, I thought we were going to try and have the project owners signing these things and not agents for the owners that may or may not pass the paperwork on. Okay. It says owner's signature on the application form and the signature there is not anybody. It's a, con it's a consultant to the owner. Was that it, Charlie? Oops. Yes, that's it. Thank okay. you. Rob? Well, I think Ben has. Okay, Ben, sorry. Well, I was just wondering about the two existing homes. There is a force main that goes out there, but what's the requirement for connecting and how close do you have to be or what's the requirement? The, uh, that falls under the um, subsurface rules, and the subsurface rules require that if the, um, the lot is within 200 feet of public sewer, there to connect and how the the um, town has been enforcing that is once the home it requires um, repair of the existing septic system they do not allow the repair they require them to connect okay so I'm looking at uh, what is this sheet five or sixteen my, <laughs> my eyes are getting worse every day here so it looks like there's only one connection is that is that for both those lots, or where are you on uh, five or sixteen at the bend where we have lot one? And uh, lot one. it looks like there's a force main connection coming out. Is that for both lots, or, we, or is there should there be one for for the existing there's, lot? There's one and that goes up the um, the private driveway that services the dwelling unit that which is not part of the. Um, Subdivision mm -hmm. and uh, I, I couldn't see another one. But I'm not that. seeing it right now. But I'm also looking at the smaller drawings. But each the, each home will have its individual service. Okay, you'll make sure of that. Yes, okay. sure. Rob, did you have a question? Okay. Um, well, I know. First of all, the application says that they're going to be constructing 1,500 feet of an inch and a half diameter, whereas the plans all say two inch. Um, and some of this line is going to be in Highland Avenue. When I look at our service map, it looks like there's quite a bit more area that could tie into this uh, line. And I'm wondering if a two inch sewer going down Highland is adequate enough, and I think that needs to be addressed because uh, I don't want to see a request come back for a parallel main in, in Highland Beach or Highland Avenue, whatever, excuse me. Um, so that needs to be addressed before the, the plans are approved. Um, also on their plans relative to the terminal manhole, that should allow for pumping at that location or uh, jetting at that location, mm -hmm. and their detail kind of indicates the standard air release valve. Um, it really needs to accommodate uh, a connection at that point. Their other manhole is pretty specific and addresses the configuration. I think they need to do the same on that uh, detail. And uh, I second what Charlie says. I would not uh, issue a final approval until this, the owner's or applicant's signatures on the plans. Uh, which detail were you uh, referring to, Rob? The detail? Yeah. Look at the air release file on sheet oh, 1216. Okay. That's it. Yep. That's the terminal manhole is an air release, mm -hmm. but it should allow for pumping and jetting. So that was one of my comments um, in my notes. I, on, on that. I already commented on that. Good. We're just going to stand by for a minute while we get uh, small noise in the room rectified here.
sorry for that. Uh, we're going to go back to things here. Were there any additional questions? Charlie? Uh, just following up on Rob's question, um, I didn't quite follow the two-inch force main in Highland Avenue. Um, if you look at our service area map, there's a lot of undeveloped property down in mm -hmm. this area that could come to our system. Yep. And right now they're proposing coming up Highland. If you look at the profile from this location up, it's two inch. And that may not be adequate in the structure to serve whatever's going to be going up that line. I think that's whichever direction that is, which would be uh, going in towards South Portland. I Correct. don't believe that's buildable. And then you go almost immediately into South Portland. Uh, and there's stuff yeah. right across the street that's pretty vacant that could develop. And I, I, I guess uh, I, I, now I understand what you're saying. And, and I guess we need to let the superintendent work out the design component of that because if that's force mains oversized now, it may not function. You may have too much storage capacity in it. For Understood. For the current you maybe so a low pressure system is not the best design. Maybe it may need to be a private lift station to be able to accommodate, you know, what flows need to go through it now and to allow for future flows. Yeah, we've had we've had I think this brings up a an issue that um the district has struggled with over the years with regard to providing additional capacity for future areas that may be serviced and how to size those up and how to get uh, capacity built. In other words, uh, this project shouldn't be obligated to provide sewer service for the rest of the service area beyond its boundaries at their sole expense. And, um, and we have historically in the past tried to require facilities to be sized up with the intent that future development would reimburse the additional costs that are put on. Um, and we, we have not found, I don't think, a successful way to do that. And uh, so maybe you want to revisit that question you know, as a as a board, as a superintendent, to think about it um, and uh, see what uh, see what we can come up with. Well, the thing is, if something comes through in the future, somebody wants to put in now a parallel main because the size is undersized, or do they go and rip up the main that's there? They may have to replace what's there at this and point and size it up to meet their. And the question their is, if I'm having them put in a four inch versus a two inch, which isn't sub Potentially a lot more cost going from a two to a four, and it's going to serve that area. Period. You know. I, I don't disagree with you if it's if it's going to still function. It's, it's not like we're asking them to put in a 24-inch main, and they only need an eight-inch. You know, a substantial. Yeah, and, you know, what, and I, I guess I've, my I've dealt with that in the past. Yeah, my 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 sense of that would be I don't think it would be problem sizing that main up if it still functions the way it needs to in the short term to, and doesn't cause us problems uh, because the flow is underutilized. And, and, and once again, way. maybe a low pressure system isn't the most adequate design here. Let me ask a question: Has the district ever paid the differential cost between the upsize infrastructure and the smaller infrastructure? Yes, they have. Uh, that was um, coal-fired farms, right? Pump station, shall we? Before it, that was after. Yeah, I'd have to. I have to do research on how yeah. that actually. Yeah, yeah. That typically, yeah. typically we we haven't allocated the resources to do that on a project by project basis yeah. because we didn't want it. We didn't. We didn't want to be bankrolling in advance indeterminate and non-committed development in right. the future and ask our ratepayers to absorb those costs. And so, yes, it could be prudent to do that, but it also is a gamble if and when or if ever mm -hmm. that development actually materializes. In, in that pump station's case, there's the, um, an additional charge 
um, the Pleasant Hill cost recovery that is um, allocated to any uh, flow that is close to that pump station. So in addition to the capacity reserve fee, there is that fee to pay for those increased costs that the district uh, did pay for. That's what was done in the past. Yeah. So I was just going to say, if you look at the first plan, it, as you go down Highland Avenue, it turns in almost all into wetland there, and I think it's on both sides of the road. But you do have tall pines across the across Highland Avenue, which is, I think, pretty much all built out. But they're on septic systems, so they may at some time want to tie in. So there may only be another 10 or 15 units you can get there, and they, that may fit into a two-inch main, which Dave will check into, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll evaluate the potential tie-ins. Just look at it, David. You know, yep. make sure that we're not selling ourselves short. I will. Further questions? All in favor of approval? None opposed. Next item is Griffin Road Senior Housing. On behalf of uh, Griffin Road Development LLC, St. Clair Associates is requesting district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from the proposed 3600 senior housing facility and one existing single family home. The sub will provide for another existing single family home, but not tied in, in at this time. The project will be serviced by a pressure sewer system and discharged into the existing gravity sewer on Route 1. A DVD easement will be provided to the district, and the portion of the pressure sewer within the right of way of Griffin Road will be transferred over to the Sanitary District upon completion of the project. I recommend approval um, with the following conditions. Uh, the project is within the original sewer service area, but the original allotment for this parcel has already been used, thus, is fully subject to the capacity reserve fee. <coughs> Uh, this fee is based on single-family residential dwelling units without accessory units, any additional homes, dwelling units, or accessory units in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. The current capacity reserve fee per dwelling unit is $2,849.15. This is adjusted monthly based on the ENR. The total capacity reserve fee due is for the 37 dwelling units is a one. $105,418.55. This fee is due prior to issuance of the sewer extension permit. Positive displacement pumps and building laterals, which are installed as part of the low pressure sewer system, shall be purchased and owned and operated by the property owner. The recorded subdivision plan shall include the following note Sewer service is by means of a pressure sewer system in each building lot is serviced by an individual pumping system owned, operated, and maintained by the homeowner. Owners, occupants, and premises serviced by a pressure sewer system shall expressly release the sanitary, the Scarborough Sanitary District from any and all liabilities associated with the use, operation, and or malfunction of the pressure sewer system. Written easement shall be provided to the satisfaction of the district attorney and superintendent. A copy of the recorded subdivision plan shall be provided to the district and both paper and electronic format. All sewer pipes shall be SDR 11, HDP, and color green. Stainless steel curb stop with integral check valve installed in each of the sewer service uh, within the property boundaries, but that's the property line. Provide a flushing manhole at the end of the right of way. Uh, all force mains, including sewer services, shall have detectable on the ground utility marking tape. Placed approximately three feet below grade, directly above the force main. Uh, provide a copy of the detailed zone analysis, design data. Pressure sewer shall be in accordance with the district's policy and conform to all district standard details. Pressure sewer pump stations shall be positive displacement type. Final plan signed and stamped by a licensed professional engineer submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits. A sewer extension permit is required. Lead application associated fee to the district prior to any sewer extension work. A sewer permit is required for each sewer service connection. Uh, complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Installation shall be inspected by the district, and the record plans provided to the district shall be uh, electronic survey, geo reference, CAD drawings, uh, both paper and electronic copies provided. 
Do I have a motion? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion and a second. Questions? Charlie. Uh, who's paying the capacity reserve fee for the 37 units? Uh, developer. So the developer is going to pay the capacity reserve fee for the adjoining property also? And I should note that the um, the engineer is here. Uh, if you have any questions for them? Would you mind going up to the podium right there? There's a microphone. Thank you. And could you just let us know who you are, please? <laughs> My name is Nancy St. Clair. I'm with St. Clair Associates. Um, just had a question for you folks with regard to the capacity reserve fee calculation. Um, in the the report that was provided. Uh, it's 2849.15 per dwelling unit. I just wanted to clarify with you folks. The apartments that we're talking about are single bedroom apartments, maximum size 750 square feet, affordable housing, age restricted senior housing. So my question is that rate I assume is up for a typical single family residential home. Has historically the trustees ever considered sort of the, the type of dwelling unit and scale that number, or is that just what it is? Would you like to take that one? Go ahead. The, uh, the, the, the fee is based on dwelling units and irregardless of square footage. So it's based on single family dwelling units calculated that way. Appreciate the info. I know I will be asked that question. Uh -huh. Charlie, was your question answered to your satisfaction, or did you? <coughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine at this point. Thank you very much. Mr. Nick. Chairman, I was just curious, where does the force main terminate on Route 1? There's an existing manhole in the sidewalk right there. Oh, it was so light, I missed it. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Do we have an uh, application executed by an applicant? We do you? not have the application as of yet executed by the applicant, but it will will be before we do anything. Can we have that if we're proving something? We can now require that if you would like. We do not. Hmm? We do not. We we haven't typically required it before. Uh, the application is for the permit for the construction of the facility, which is okay. issued by the superintendent once, once we've authorized the project to go, to go forward. Typically, we, we do not require them. Every it now will be and then they are the provided. Huh? And it will be signed by the applicant. And it will be signed by the applicant, the owner. Owner, yes, excuse me. So okay. this project is going to have a duplex pump station and Tied into the force main is going to be a positive displacement pump. The the duplex pump station will be a also a positive displacement duplex pump station. Oh, it will. Yeah, they make them. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, my my question was whether whether there'd be uh, the valving and check valving, et cetera, on the pump station would be adequate to accommodate protected from backflow from a positive displacement pump elsewhere. Okay. I assume that uh, if it's a positive displacement pump station also, that that won't be an issue. Any further questions? None? All in favor of approval? Again, none opposed. Moving on to the next item under new business. Is our five month budget summary. Uh, <laughs> That's just your five month budget summary. I recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. Any questions on the budget summary? Just one. Um, when do you think we're going to start seeing the power costs? Start exceeding our budget amounts. Is it, is it going to be before November, or will it be? Our, we're under contract with our current rate until November, so we should be good until November. 
Um, I, you know, I think, frankly, I think we'll be all right this budget year mm -hmm. with, with regards to our electric, electricity costs. Um, but we'll see the increase in costs. And um, I had Wendy put together, um, summarize the one year's worth of data. And um, the uh, medium accounts, which is uh, we're on a fixed cost until 2016, um, um, for the past 12 months, we, we spent $166,000 there. Uh, for the small account, which will be subject to this increase, uh, is 32,000. So it's the, the the increase is the, um, the the smaller portion of our electrical expenses. So. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Nick. Um, just looking at the fuel non-vehicle line item, and out of curiosity, have we spent almost 75 percent by this time of the year in previous years, or is this a little higher than normal. A little higher than normal, but because of the colder winter yeah, we had and the spring, yes. in spring, in summer, <laughs> in summer. Yeah. No other questions. All in favor of approval. Five-month budget summary. All right. Next, we move on to public comments, and public has left the building this evening. Hope it's not something we said, but. Uh, <laughs> No public present. I'll uh, move on to trustee comments, and I'll start down on my left with Ben. Uh, no comments, Sally. Thank you. Sir? I'd um, love to hear, Dave, when you get a chance about your thoughts on asset management and how to develop that at uh, the district when you get a chance. I'd love to talk to you about that. Great. You need enlightening in a lot of areas. <laughs> Good. Nick? Yes, one of you. I express my condolences to the Rizbera family on the loss of Marsha. She was a great woman, and she was filled with heart and love, and uh, I'm going to miss her, as will most people in Scarborough. Thanks, Nick. Dave? I, too, will uh, pass on the condolences to the Rizbera family on the loss of Marsha. Uh, she was a fantastic person, a uh, wonderful human being. Uh, also, I'd like to echo condolences to the Rosario family. Also, for everybody looking forward to the holiday weekend, enjoy, but don't enjoy too much. Uh, don't blow up my house or anybody else's. And uh, that's about it. Thank you. <laughs> Wise words of wisdom there. <laughs> uh, for the uh, upcoming workshop uh, in July, is there any backup information that? You're going to provide to us in advance of that, or, yes, um, or will we just start to review that when we get here? No, I plan on getting uh, packet informa information out to you prior, so you have okay. some, something. And that's to going review. to include the provisions of the town zoning yep. codes. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, I'm I'm kind of happy to see that we've actually got some development proposals on our uh, agendas. Uh, sign of continuing ec economic recovery and uh, and as some of these projects come online, a source of additional revenue to take some of the pressure off uh, of the district with regard to finances. Um, also would like to extend my condolences to the Rosbara family for their loss and the passing of, of Marsha Rosbara, uh, wonderful woman. Um, and uh, sorry for all those troubles. Um, and also, I just want to wish everybody a safe and happy Fourth of July holiday. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, again, echoing my condolences to the Risbear family. Uh, our, our family is mine, and the Risbears are very close, and uh, certainly mourning their loss as well. And uh, wish them all the very best going forward. Hope. Hopefully their luck turns a little bit here in the future. The loss of the matriarch and the patriarch of the family there, it's very difficult times for them. Um, also, I wanted to echo Charlie's comments about uh, how great it is to see some new projects coming of, of light into our attention here. Great to see things on the up and up there. Um, also wanted to thank uh, the folks at the, uh, the Black Point Inn and uh, 
working as quickly as possible to resolve the issues down there. Uh, Dave was right on top of it, and it, it sounds like they're making the moves that they need to to make sure uh, the repairs are done in a timely manner, so thank you to them. And uh, to everybody out there, please have a safe and happy Fourth of July weekend. Uh, looking forward to some great weather coming up, looks like. So all the best to everyone. And with that, I will... Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to the second. All in favor? We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.